a month. How much did our, in our project, how much did we pay a month for health insurance? Do you remember? I think it was around like 200. It was 200 each paycheck. We are working on a percentage unit. And so we wanted to take that idea and really push it outside of the classroom, um, get them thinking about how can I use this in my life. So we had a budgeting project. So all the students picked a job out of a hat. Um, it ranged everything from a police officer to a physician's assistant to a computer technician. And using their iPads, they did research to find out the average salaries for entry level jobs. And using a tax bracket, they used percentages and figured out exactly how much they would make. Um, and so it started essentially a month long budget. How much do we pay for heating? Oh, how much do we pay for We paid, oh, well, that was part of our. They read a small paragraph that said financial planners suggest that you spend 28% of your monthly income on your mortgage. So that was their cap. They weren't allowed to spend more than 28%. And so to do that, they had to figure out how much that was. Um, today, they calculated in the sample budget what percentage of that income was spent on mortgage, and it was 29. So they're like, okay, they're, they're at least following that. So when looking at this sample budget, and they talked about a lot of the problems with it, you heard one of the students say, well, one of the good things was they used the same percentage. Um, so it's just basically taking the percent ideas, the decimal ideas, and pushing it into how can this actually be helpful in life. And that, on this, there is no $600. Right, so when we looked at our chart for buying... So they got two paychecks, they had to pay different bills, so they looked online for different homes that were for sale, they had to make decisions if they were going to rent or buy, um, they found different cars that were for sale, and it all sort of culminated with adopting an egg baby. Um, they had to go through and calculate the cost of a child, and that's what they paid this morning. Um, so they looked at exactly how much diapers would cost and how much formula would cost. Um, and then today, they really worked on comparing how much they made in their project to a minimum wage budget. We talked about how much a child would cost for the entire month. Remember calculating that? One of the components of this project was we learned how to write a check. So they used their iPads and wrote a check and then uploaded that to Google Drive so that I can see all the checks that they wrote. Um, and then they have to update their check register. So there is some addition and subtraction of decimals there um, so they know what their final balance is for today. Unfortunately, we had to have a doctor visit. And that's going to cost us $25. And then we always have random life events, one because they're fun and the kids love it, but two, um, we talk about how we can plan for a lot of things, but oftentimes <laughs> things happen. Your car battery breaks or your granny sends you $50, but they're starting to see, okay, I have to plan for this. When I'm budgeting, when I think about how much money I have, I really need to go and say I need some aside just in case something happens. And then today they analyzed um, an article about this sample budget that McDonald's put out. Um, and I like doing this because it really helps change their idea about what it means to live on minimum wage. Like what if your child gets yeah. sick or has cancer or something? Yeah. You're not going to be able to afford that with $20 for health insurance. And then I think the egg baby part of it, um, first of all, it just brings an element of fun. The kids love it. Um, they call it the egg baby project from day one. As much as I push the budgeting project, uh, they call it the egg baby project. Um, to me, the building of the egg homes is a huge problem-solving activity. They have to think through, okay, I'm going to be walking from class to class. You saw one of the students had a whole um, arm carrier so that he knew he was going to be holding his instrument and he was going to be holding his binder and how was he going to get his egg to class. Um, so there's a lot of thought process that goes through it, a lot of creativity. Um, and we've worked from day one to make this room a place where they all feel comfortable to share their ideas and the fact that they put a little TV in there and they name their eggs crazy things that they, they all love it and they support each other regardless of what their ideas are. Um, and that's obviously the number one goal in a classroom. I said minimum wage at McDonald's can't pay the bills. Yeah. Having a second job that's... So in sixth grade, whether it's a pre-algebra class or a math six class, my main goal is really to have the kids focus on their problem solving through project-based learning. Um, and also to really understand that math really exists outside of these four walls. Um, most of the time I think we get stuck into this sit down, do a math problem um, from a math textbook or from a math worksheet 
and there's no connect to how is this ever going to be useful. Um, with projects like this, they really see how math is going to be helpful to them forever.